Okay, now that we're confident that we have a good solution for the velocity distribution um, from the first module of the two that we're going to combine here in this multi-physics modeling, it's time to move on and add the transport of diluted species balances to this whole overall process. So we're going to go back to this right here where it's grayed out, re-enable this. Now we're going to specify our, spe our equations. The equations, as again, are in this drop-down menu. This is a reaction diffusion with advection slash convection. And this is the reaction term. These are the boundary conditions on the outside. So pretty standard um, reaction diffusion convection equation. We're going to have convection as transport, and it's going to be involved in both domains. So that looks pretty good. So let's scroll down to the convection and diffusion window here. The velocity distribution in these domains is going to be the velocity field, which is named SPF slash FP1 from our laminar flow multiphysics. This is where some of the power of ComSol is really apparent. You can just combine these different physics operations and they transfer the information from the different variables and spaces to the different models that you're going to solve. So we select that and then we'll automatically properly account for the velocity distributions. The diffusion coefficient here is user-defined, uh, defaults to this value 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared per second. That's a pretty reasonable um, uh, value to use. And we're going to look at this as an isotropic diffusion. If you had a gradient material properties along one axis or another, this suddenly could be non-isotropic and you can specify the different diffusion rates in different directions. Now, just as before, we have this equation set up. The equation is pretty easily uh, understood. We don't have any reaction terms, so we're not going to add any of those to this equation. And we don't uh, um, have to really make any modifications to the subdomain equations, but every PDE needs the, the differential equation and the boundary conditions. So on this one, the boundary conditions are specified as no flux all the way around. However, we need to make a few changes. No flux, as you can see here, is minus n dot capital Ni equals zero. Ni is the, is the, uh, the uh, fixed law for diffusion term, uh, minus d grad c in this instance applies for all species. So we need to make some changes. We want to have this being convection driven here and here and we're going to specify concentrations on the domains right here. Okay. So first let's specify a concentration boundary condition. And we're going to manually specify the concentration. Let's zoom in on this uh, zoom to selection. Uh, zoom out a little bit so we get the whole circle. And if you hold on the shift key, you can add these to each other. If you hold down the control key and you click on them again, they change color. And this allows you to. Oh, well, that's not. Excuse me. Uh, it's a right click on this new version. If you right click on it, now they're all together, specified um, as the ones that we're going to use. They've been added now to our boundary selection. It's the concentration we're going to specify here. On this boundary, we'll just specify it as one mole per meter cubed. And the equation, of course, C is on that region equals this. So this is a ring of concentration. It's not exactly the same as a flux. We could convert this and, and make this a source reaction term, but it, to the end, it'll have the same effect as having constant con concentration at that point in space. So now that we've done that, we have to specify two more boundary conditions. Those are the boundary conditions that will be mediated by the inlet and outlet of our convection problem. So it's not going to be no flux conditions here and here. It's going to be inlet boundary conditions here. So right click on this inflow right here so we'll add this to the inflow concentration of the inflow is going to be zero
Now let's add, let's select this one. We'll make this an outflow. So the outflow at this boundary right here, it's boundary four, the equation is actually ends up being the no flux equation. And this is going to be overriding the no flux condition. So if you want to check which boundary condition that you're applying dominates, you can go to any of the boundary conditions that you've specified. And the ones that are overridden will have a little uh, parentheses around them that say overridden. Okay. So now that that is finished, we can go, sometimes you can automatically mesh or you can click on the mesh and then you can inspect the mesh and make adjustments as needed. This is a pretty fine mesh, um, but given that the fact that the system is very long relative to its height, there's a bit of a spatial disparity there and so this is, this is a pretty good starting point mesh. So now we can go back down here that this is enabled, go back to our stationary solver and then hit the equal sign again to compute a solution for both. Again, we can check the convergence as this problem, prob problem progresses. If you start to see a lot of jumping around, it could indicate a problem. But it should drop off to having a pretty low error. 